How to learn cooking in the best way. Cooking is a fundamental life skill. Basic cooking skills are very easy to learn. Ordering takeout or tossing a pre-made frozen dinner in the oven may be quick and convenient, but there's something special about being able to cook your own meal. Plus, foods you make yourself are almost always healthier and more wholesome than processed or prepackaged foods. If learning to cook seems intimidating, don't worry. You don't need fancy equipment or lots of experience to make good food. Once you master a few simple techniques, you'll be able to create all kinds of tasty dishes. Firstly, you need to know some basic cooking techniques. Toss chopped veggies in olive oil and roast them at 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 218 degrees Celsius. Roasting is an easy, healthy, and delicious way to cook just about any vegetable. Use a sharp kitchen knife to cut vegetables into bite-sized pieces, put them in a bowl, then coat them in 1 or 2 tablespoons, or 15 to 30 milliliters of a healthy vegetable oil, such as olive, canola, or sesame. Sprinkle them with salt and pepper, then spread them on a baking sheet. Roast them in the oven until you can easily pierce them with a fork and they're slightly browned or charred around the edges. Cook meats in the oven for a flavorful and tender result. You can cook almost any cut of meat in the oven. Preheat your oven to the recommended cooking temperature for about 20 minutes while your meat sits at room temperature to ensure even cooking. Season the outside of the meat with plenty of salt and pepper and set it in a wide roasting pan, preferably on a rack or a bed of vegetables. 30 minutes before your recipe says the meat is supposed to be ready, use a meat thermometer to see if it's reached a safe internal temperature. Stir fry proteins and veggies in a skillet for a quick stovetop meal. Stir fries are some of the most versatile and simple meals you can make. Cut some meat or tofu into bite-sized chunks and toss it into a skillet or wok at medium-high heat with convert 1 or 2 tablespoons or 15 to 30 milliliters of vegetable oil. Brown the meat or cook it through if it's chicken, pork, or shrimp and set it aside. Cook some chopped up vegetables in the pan for 2 to 3 minutes, then return the meat to the pan and cover it with broth or sauce. Take it off the heat after one more minute, or once the sauce is bubbling hot. Simmer brown rice for 45 minutes if you want a simple side. To make simple brown rice, put 1 cup, about 180 grams of rice in a strainer and rinse it with cool water to remove dust. Put the rice in a pan with 2 cups, or 470 milliliters of water and 1 teaspoon, or 4.16 grams of salt, then bring the water to a boil. Reduce the heat to low, tightly cover the pot, and let the rice simmer for 45 minutes without stirring or checking on it. After 45 minutes, the water should be absorbed and your rice should be tender. Turn off the heat and let the rice sit with the cover on for 10 to 15 minutes. Boil veggies in stock or broth to make a simple soup. If you have a lot of stray vegetables in your fridge or pantry, you can easily turn them into a comforting and nutritious soup. Dice up the vegetables into bite-sized pieces. Saute hard veggies, like carrots, potatoes, or cauliflower, in a frying pan with a little butter or olive oil to soften them a little and bring out their flavor. Then, bring some broth or stock to a boil, add the veggies, and turn down the heat. Let your soup simmer for about an hour or until the veggies are nice and tender. Steam vegetables to preserve their texture and nutrients. Steaming is an easy way to make tender, tasty vegetables without boiling away all the vitamins and minerals. Pour 1 to 2 inches, or 2.5 to 5.1 centimeters of water into the bottom of a stovetop steamer and put it on the stove at medium-high heat until it boils. Reduce the heat so the water goes down to a simmer, just bubbling slightly, then place your vegetables in the top part of the steamer and put on the lid. After a few minutes, check to see if you can easily pierce your veggies with a fork. Most vegetables will be ready within 5 to 10 minutes. Experiment with different seasonings to add flavor. The right seasonings can take even the simplest dish from okay to amazing. As you get more comfortable with basic cooking techniques, move beyond the basics of salt and black pepper and try a variety of other herbs, spices, aromatics, and other flavor boosters. Then, you can work with recipes. Start with simple recipes that have few ingredients. There are endless recipes online and in cookbooks, so picking one to start with can feel intimidating. If you're just learning to cook, Start with basic recipes that don't require lots of ingredients or fancy equipment. Pick up a cookbook for beginners or search for recipes online using terms like quick, easy, and basic. Read the recipe a few times so you know what to expect. Before you actually start cooking, take some time to familiarize yourself with the steps involved and the materials you'll need. 
That way, you won't encounter any unpleasant surprises partway through the cooking process. This is also a good time to look up any unfamiliar cooking terms in the recipe. Get your materials together before you start. If you're running around in a panic trying to find a utensil or ingredient partway through the cooking process, you're not going to have the greatest cooking experience. Before you begin cooking, review the recipe carefully and make sure you have everything you're going to need ready to go. Follow instructions carefully when you're starting out. As you get more experienced in the kitchen, you'll develop a stronger instinct for what works and what doesn't, and you can start improvising more freely. When you're new to cooking, though, it's a good idea to follow recipes closely so you get the proportions of ingredients right and avoid over or under cooking your dishes. Use measuring cups and spoons to measure ingredients. Eventually, you'll probably get comfortable enough with cooking to eyeball how much of a particular ingredient you need. When you're still learning, though, don't leave it to chance. If a recipe calls for a cup of flour or 5 milliliters of almond extract, use a measuring cup or spoon to get the right amount. Look up substitutions if you're missing an ingredient. If you get partway through a recipe and discover that you're missing a key ingredient, don't panic. It's often possible to substitute one ingredient for another. Many cookbooks have an appendix listing common substitutions, or you can search online for substitutions for a specific ingredient. Finally, if you want to prepare food fast and save more time, there are some strategies that can help make the process more efficient. Plan ahead. Make a weekly meal plan and grocery list to ensure that you have all the ingredients you need on hand. Consider cooking meals in bulk and freezing leftovers for quick and easy meals later in the week. Use quick cooking ingredients. Stock your kitchen with ingredients that cook quickly, such as boneless chicken breasts, pre-cut vegetables, and quick cooking grains like quinoa or couscous. Utilize quick cooking methods. Grilling, stir-frying, and microwaving are all fast cooking methods that can be used to prepare meals quickly. Keep it simple. Opt for simple recipes with a few ingredients, as opposed to complicated, multi-step recipes. Make use of leftovers. Incorporate leftovers from previous meals into new dishes, such as using leftover grilled chicken in a salad or pasta. Use pre-made ingredients. Take advantage of pre-cut vegetables, pre-cooked grains, and other convenience items to save time. Invest in time-saving tools. Consider purchasing tools such as a slow cooker, pressure cooker, or air fryer to make meal preparation faster and easier. The most difficult part for vegetables could be grating. The best way for grating is to buy a rotary grater, which is easy, quick, safe, and saving lots of efforts. Usually, the rotary grater can be used for grating, striping, slicing, rounding, and shredding. For dicing vegetables, it is not difficult for just doing by hands. But using a dicer can be much faster. Just think about dicing an onion with just one cut. For mincing garlic, etc. It is not difficult for just doing by hands. But using a mincer can be much faster. By incorporating these strategies, you can save time and effort in the kitchen while still enjoying healthy and delicious meals. Thanks for watching.